you know, follow the news. The insurance says, we're not going to pay. We'll let the owner pay. Because the owner didn't have a certified car ticket. So for all of you who manage buildings here, the first thing you want to do is you want to send out a letter that states to everyone in your portfolio, say, hi, we've just been made aware that there's a national law, whether it's local or not, that says all fire states must be examined as per the IFC 2012 11.04. It's all in your documentation in front of you. So please give me a copy of the most recent fire state inspection and load test. If not, please notify my office so I can order one for you immediately so you can be in compliance. You've just basically wiped yourself of the next liability. Because if I own a building and you're managing it and you're taking my money, and this happens, I will sue backwards as far as I can go. Because I pay people to watch this to me. So there's a lot since 2012. National. If your state has a uh, has um, Adopted the 2015, it's in the 2015 IFC. Every structure in the U.S. now must be examined every five years and load tested. If it has an exterior steel or wooden egress, balconies, bridges. Will that cover some portion of people use that for second major egress? So, this is what the reason is for fire escapes. They're like a parachute on the plane. How many of you have tested the uh, parachute in the airplane? Oh, then you. How many of you have tested the life vest underneath? They don't let you, right? So how do you know it works? Who's testing these things? Fire escapes are the same way. The only time you really use them is when it's for egress, but it's also for firemen ingress. It's also for their, when all hell breaks loose, for them to egress back out. Now, any firemen in here? Any building departments in here? All right, let me tell you what the fire departments teach all the new recruits that are coming in to fight these fires. They teach these guys, in case of fire, don't use the fire escape. Why is that? Because none of them have ever been certified. Firemen are dying on these fire escape trying to save people. So what kills people, a fire or a smoke? So while they wait for the fire truck to show up, the ladder to show up, and they can see the mom and the baby at the window where they've been instructed every day. Even their fire towers had that fire escape on them. I inspect those. How many think of those pets? I shut down fire towers a lot because the fire escape on the fire towers not even inspected and repaired. So it's a crazy, crazy, crazy situation. So about uh, how many of you here remember the station night fire that killed a bunch of people up in the in the excuse me, in, uh, in Rhode Island. So that started this whole thing going about, let's get these fire escapes under control. So let me tell you a little bit about this picture. It's on some of your booklets, so I've read the page. So let me tell you how strong fire escapes are. Now usually this is a six hour continuous class. I've taught it in the state of New Jersey. Believe it or not, I'm from Boston. State of New Jersey really took off with it, believe it or not. You know why the state of New Jersey has some of the best laws in the country? Because they have some of the worst catastrophes in the country. You want, you want to know what goes on on you know, rides and amusement parks? Yeah. They have the worst fires and worst of everything, and then they created laws usually after the fact. So they did the best. You know my next best, uh, best state that I work with? Portland, Oregon. All right, so it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a catchy tune. People say, hey, let's talk about fire escapes. Nope. It means thousands of dollars that people don't want to spend. And they never use it. It's like, hey, I'll spend thousands of dollars on my parachute, which I'm never going to use on my beautiful planes. But let's make everybody feel comfortable. How old do you think this picture is? 50s, 60s? How about the hats? That guy's hat right there. But you see that 5x5 five five square? A low test is 100 pounds per square foot. 5x5 five five equals 25. Uh, 25 times 100 is 2,500. When we build these fire escapes with a 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three angle, it's made to hold 2,500 pounds of people, sandbags, and that's just the limit. But you can go above and beyond that. So let's do some quick calculation. Typical firemen, they weigh 200 pounds, about 100 pounds of gear. If I take five firemen fully dressed up, can I get them in a 5x5 five five square? So take those 
five firemen times 300 pounds, 1,500 pounds, how many pounds I have left over for those guys? About 1,000, right? Easy. Let's take the 150 pound typical tenant in the building. I'm going to get 10 of those people together and I'm going to try to squeeze 10 tenants in a five by five. Can I do it? All right, and I still have 1,000 pounds to go. So, fire escapes since, since the 1900s, when they first came out, they've always been 100 pounds per square foot. What's that mean? You have to be two foot square, over 10 feet tall, and you have to be almost 700 pounds for you to <coughs> put those two foot square people in on, on a fire escape and it'll still hold. So when a fire escape injury occurs, it's not because the fire escape couldn't hold it. It's not because people are having a party on it that has nothing to do with it. It has to do with the fact that the maintenance on the fire escape, some connection holding the fire escape broke and that's what collapsed. The connection on the fire escape itself or the connection of the fire escape to the building. That's what gave way, that's it. So, and so we start growing two foot square, 10 foot tall, 700 pound people. And, you know, I want to get there. So just remember, that's how old, that's how over robust these things are. But if you ignore these for 50, 75, 100 years, how many farmers can you put on it? Not even one. Got it? So that's what happened in Philadelphia. It was a fatality five years ago, expert witness case. And all of a sudden, are you aware that in Philadelphia, there went an ordinance, uh, an ordinance went out that said, every fire escape in Philadelphia now must be examined by July 1, 2017. Anybody have buildings or have been to the building? There you go. How many of you met the requirement of every single structure, wood or steel, in Philadelphia must be examined? So that was their knee-jerk reaction that came five years later after a collapse and a lawsuit and all this other stuff. Every building, 20, 30,000 fire escapes need to be examined. Oh, and they, they made it even worse by saying, oh, the fire escape says the code says design professional, others acceptable. So that means structural engineers, registered architects, people in the industry of fire escape inspectors, which is what I am. Okay? And they said, no, no, only these people called structural engineers can go look at this fire escape. Most structural linear engineers know what we call them, brain surgeons. Fire escapes is foot fungus. <laughs> and they're getting this call. The best call we got was the archdiocese had called their structural engineer and they called us and said, brain, foot fungus, can you help us? Because we've got 2,000 to inspect. So that's what happens. If you don't, usually your city will kick into panic mode when there's a dead fireman, a dead person, a dead baby on the ground next to a fire escape, and everybody's going to say, what, do you, what haven't you done about it? Right? So normally it's a six hour class, one hour. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to machine gun you right now with a bunch of slides. And then what I'm going to do is get back to the book that I gave you. I'm going to tell you where all the information is and all the classes. I've been doing this class, I've taught this class from Seattle to San Diego, used to doing it. Very few people are proactive, and there's always some injury that occurs from Chicago to Texas, and from Maine to Florida, I taught this class. Some of you will leave here and like, get on it, and some of you will just leave here and keep some great, some additional information. So what states are gonna pop? What cities are gonna pop? A lot of times, don't wait for this to come from the top down. You're going to come from the bottom up, the bottom up. Individual cities enacting local ordinance or just start to look at fire escapes. Just to give you an example, the worst fire escapes in the nation are in Philadelphia. How close are we to Philadelphia? I not. There you go. So, how many fire I did, it's all it's obvious. How many calls did I get from Baltimore this year? Zero. Got it? Just to give you an example of where things are at, right? So, in your book, the start of your book, let me show you what you have now. Stop machine gunning through these things. Certain states demand that you put a tag on your fire escape. All fire protection equipment must have a tag. You know, fire escapes in the U.S. do not have tags on them. So if you were to walk by, you don't know if lot inspected. You don't know anything. But right now, Seattle wants tags and mandated it. Portland, Oregon wants tags. Certain states in Massachusetts wants tags. Cal um, uh, L.A. wants tags. Tags. Philadelphia wants tags, Cincinnati wants tags, and they want to know, is it certified? 
by other weapons of strength or low tech, or is it under repair, or is it a life concern? Okay. You have Department of Procedures and Guidelines. What's that mean? That's man version of what the law and code says. Can you give me a man version? So that's what the Department of Procedures and Guidelines are. Okay, I have on my laptop, and I'll show you at the end, where you go to get this information. So if you don't want to do what we do at the National Firescape Association, just go to this is Portland. If you go to Firescape Issues Portland, Oregon, so if you want to write that down, it's all written on there. Then you go right to their website, and all of a sudden, I helped put this, this together. This took 10 years to get to this website. In various times and revisions and stuff, so Portland, so right, type in Firescape Issues Portland, Oregon. This will pop up, they'll tell you how to inspect it, how to repair it. And, and again, my job is to tell you where the best ones are, and sometimes, this one's 75% good, this one's 85% good, and I like something here, but I don't like it here, and so I just, I'll help you merge it. Otherwise, copy any one of these, and it's better than nothing. Confidence test, you have one in front of you. This is the only confidence test in the nation. Every confidence test that's out there by LA, Seattle, Portland, they copy these 25 questions that I helped them write. So if you go to the websites, which I'm going to show you, you can actually get a blank of this. And this is 25 specific questions on a fire safe and all its components that any engineer can use. Now, if an engineer is like, I'm not going to fill out this document, I don't like the fact that somebody else made it, great. You can hand this to any architect, any engineer, so this is the 25 questions, put them on your letterhead, and answer them. So this is nothing but a guide that you can use or a guide that you can just steal the questions from. <laughs> The second page, all the way up to the unicorn question. This is 25. So if I, you're inspecting your fire escape and it's got some weird oddity to it, question number 25 is where you put it in. You know, this thing had a, a pigeon coop underneath it. Okay? This right here is all the codes. We're going to go over the IFC, the IPC, the NFPA, and we're going to talk about OSHA. Sorry that the machine but this is, it's only one hour. Uh, this is what the, the different cities will have and what they want to do. And by the way, this is, the, this is also part of the, the uh, confidence test. A vendor sheet. So not only do you have to qualify the, the engineer who's looking at this, this fire escape, you have to qualify the vendor. Otherwise, this is the how you get rid of the witch doctors, the welding witch doctors. Because a lot of times, people are looking at a five-story fire escape that will be fixed by a welding witch doctor for 5000 fully refurbished and properly repaired for $25,000. The owner has a uh, document in his hands that I'm in violation, and my building inspector only can use a scrape and paint. Who gets, and has been getting, for 50 to 75 years, all these jobs in New York City. We call them the welding witch doctors. Do they remove the rust? No. Do they drop little bars of round in between where the rust is so they can bridge weld? You know, weld this to the tread and then weld it to the thing and leave the rust in the connection? Yes, do they weld the nose? Do they burn buildings down? Yes, do they kill firemen during these fires? Yes. <clears throat> All right, here's the codes. It's in the, in the sheets and we'll go into a lot more detail. The International Fire Code is, since 2012, every structure in the U.S., so the multiple states, Every city, I mean, every state requires that you low test your fire escape as an international fire code. Now, if, the, if your state hasn't adopted the fire code in 2012 or 2015, but if they have, this is already. So even if there's no ordinance in your city, the international fire code mandates that every structure with an exterior steel wood the stair, balcony, bridges must be examined and low tested. The international building code states the same thing. All fire escapes must be uh, protecting certification is pretty much the mirror image of the International Fire Code. You went to the International Fire Code from 2012 and then you look on the Firescape Examination and it says see the Fire Code. So they took it out of the International Fire Code, I mean, Building Code, put it back into the Fire Code. NFPA, the authority having jurisdiction shall be permitted to approve any existing fire escape that has been shown by low test or other evidence of strength. We're going to get into that. What is other evidence of strength? So even the NFPA, which sometimes sneaks in on a building, that they say, well, what's the NFPA say about that, okay? Let's go into the OSHA. Not many people know about this. This is 1910.37. During repairs, alterations, 
whether it's a dead building or an employee field building and you're doing different floors, it says you must maintain two means of egress at all times during alterations and repairs. What's that mean? You fix the fire escape last or first? Should be first in order for you to meet the OSHA guidelines. And that's for anybody walking in that building, including building inspectors and engineers. So if all of a sudden you get there and the fire escape is a train wreck, it's a $100,000 train wreck that nobody knew, what's it say right here? It says until alternative fire protection is furnished, that is equivalent. So what's that? Scaffolding. So you get a train wreck of a fire escape, you, you order some scaffolding, $2,000 a month, you're good to go, you keep on rolling. Except the scaffolding is not construction scaffolding, that scaffolding is full egress scaffolding, three feet wide, 7-Eleven, rails, protection, for both the contractors and now and the employees. And who confirms that it's equivalent? The building department and the fire department show up that day and say, you've mothballed my fire escape, you have con uh, construction scaffolding here, keep it going. If you stop the money train, get what happens. Then the mayor's gonna inspect that building, and then what happens? All right, let's keep this thing going because it's an election year, right? Now, station night fire. So this is going to tell you how long ago I've been teaching this class. She, uh, uh, one of these pit bull reporters, investigative reporters, said, hey, we, you know, station night fire, a lot of people died. I like to do a fire escape one, a uh, story of fire escape, a lot of minutes just say, hey, in case of fire, learn to use your fire escape. I told her, 75% plus of everything I examined fails. Of that 50% has life safety and imminent dangers. She goes, no way, we have laws, we have rules. No way. They're there, but nobody's, nobody's adhering. Look at the back of your book. That happened in Boston. That's the, the very famous photo of one of Pulitzer Prize. And why did that win a prize? Because a uh, fireman, he saved his life by hanging onto the ladder. The woman died, her niece landed on her. Look at all that fire escape falling behind her. There and then, in 73, they said, you know, we have an IV, uh, the uh, IBC code, but it didn't have the five-year rule in it. So they applied the five-year rule and said, you know what? We just can't have this here where the owner controls when he inspects. We need to have a five-year rule. Just like elevators, sprinklers. There's never been a five-year rule anywhere in the US unless it was pushed in by some sort of fatality. And the, uh, and the IFC finally caught on in 2012. Every building you manage, every building you know about, every structure you walk under <laughs> has never been examined or load tested and there's no tag on it. So why do firemen get told don't get on it? That was your kid, what would you tell them? Don't get on it. Why? Because you have some knowledge? Well, they finally caught on, we were in 2017. I think, I think there was big changes in 2012 even though it came out. It's still not a norm. Right now in Baltimore there's nothing there's no calls, there's no inspection. I'm not aware, we believe that we get some calls from all, all around the area. We'll get calls from DC, we'll get calls from Philly, but we never get a call from Baltimore. Let's watch our story. The smoke, the flames, and the frightened faces. All in a firefighter's line of duty. But Chief William Hitchcock remembers the night it wasn't the fire that almost stopped him. But the fire escape that broke underneath him. Well, the railing just came away from the building. And our investigation found that across Massachusetts, more unsafe fire escapes. Rusty, deteriorated, crumbling, broken. And what state officials didn't know, the system they set up to keep fire escapes safe is also falling apart. The potential ramifications are disastrous. So let's look at this one. This expert iron worker is licensed to build, maintain, and inspect fire escapes. So what are we here? For months, we examined dozens of them with alarming results. Looking at this today, would this pass inspection? No. In dormitories, at theaters, at homes, and apartment buildings. Rust is actually eating away the metal of the fire escape. Right. And the lock line? It'll get weak and then eventually it'll fall. This one has rotted connections. This one missing bolts. Twisted metal. Would the stairs come down? No, never come down. This one, a broken tread. So how dangerous is it for the people inside this floor? This fire escape is definitely going to put somebody either in the hospital or it's going to put somebody in the, in the cemetery. Fire escapes are so critical. 
the state building code requires they be certified for structural adequacy and safety every five years. But our investigation found that safeguard is simply being ignored. Here's proof. We chose fire escapes at Brandon in Boston, Somerville, Cambridge, Worcester, and here in Quincy. We checked building department files. But there's no fire escape certification. To see if building owners had submitted their mandatory inspection reports. There's no certification in this way. Bottom line, not one we checked in Quincy had been certified as safe. And the Director of Inspectional Services admitted because of staffing shortages, the city has no idea how many other fire escape owners are breaking the rules. And as a result, do you know how many fire escapes in your city are safe? Or not? Well, I don't know. In Worcester, not one we checked was certified. In Somerville, no. four more fire escapes. The fault of the rest. Yeah. Not one up-to-date certification. And again, no system for keeping track. How can they get away? I guess that the shortest names were evolving because we don't have the resources to sit here and follow up on these things. If structural efficiencies are reported, local building inspectors can actually evacuate residents until repairs are made. Would you talk to us on camera about this? No. But when we surveyed two dozen more communities, most admitted they had no idea how many fire escapes were certified. In Taunton, inspectors told us they haven't seen a certification in 25 years. Northampton officials said it's a cold day in hell when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> on average, too, not one of our test buildings was certified, and the official in charge would not come out to discuss it. In Boston, there were more than 8,000 fire escapes. Again, according to inspectional services, not one each was certified. The officials know they are required to enforce the building code, but they admit they don't always know if owners are breaking the law. The building code is being ignored. But, but it's difficult to write about it if you don't have knowledge of something like that. But state officials say for a critical issue like this, communities should know. And they warn the Massachusetts building code is not optional. Does it worry you that these fire escapes are not being certified? This is an important issue. And it should not be ignored. That's because after the smoke and flames begin, it'll be too late to learn. You've got no way out. I can't stress it enough, Hank. That these things have to be maintained and someone's going to be watching. As a result of our investigation, state officials will now issue an alert to local inspectors. Meanwhile, if there's a fire escape on your home or office, you can contact your local building department to make sure it's properly certified. In the newsroom, I'm Hank Phillippe Ryan. So, I, uh, after this, and I started teaching class, I found the National Fire Escape Association. So, has Boston called me to teach a class in Boston? Has the Boston Fire Department called me to teach a class? Has the state of Massachusetts brought me to teach a class? Has the associations of all the building inspectors in this four in the state, have they called me to do classes? And recorded, we got the recorded and put them up online for free. They're on, they're on there. I'll show you where you can go take a look. Even this class will be up in about 10 days. Um, the, the next thing that comes from this is it's usually on the city level. So certain cities in, in Massachusetts have become model cities but they're not the major metropolitan city. So it's weird where it's going to pop. It all depends on who's in charge, who wants to keep an eye on it. And you don't have to go find money. We're going to tell you how to just make this a checklist item. We'll talk about that at the end. If you make this a checklist item, you don't look for fire escapes. They find you because you pair them up with sprinkler systems. You pair them up with smoke detectors. You pair them up with uh, re-rents. You pair them up with uh, any kind of a re-inspection where people have left and people are coming back in or people are about to go in and you just pair it up as one of the requirements because it's required by law that you have two means of egress. So it's a, we don't call it a fire escape initiative, we call it a safe structures initiative. So write that down. It's called a safe structures initiative and all we need to do to make sure that you're legal from day one is you need two means of egress in every structure in the, in the U.S. to either buy it, sell it, or rent it. So it's called the Safe Structures Initiative. From there, it can grow into many things, and that is, do we have two means of egress for these people to get in there? Got it? So now, the welding witch doctors. Who do they kill? Who do they hurt? They kill and hurt everybody. Now, this just happened two years ago in the city of Boston, which I did, you know, she did this thing. It must have cured itself. Look at this. Fire escape when they spark the deadly fire. 
Fox Area Cover revealed Wednesday a back fire escape hadn't been inspected in 10 years, even though inspections are required every five years. Let's get a report of Mike Bodet hanging up some new exclusive information tonight. Mike? We looked at the entire Beacon Street block where the fatal fire happened and discovered, just like 296 Beacon Street, most of the fire escapes there are overdue for inspections. It turns out the city doesn't have any mechanism in place to track building owners violating the rules and hold them accountable. Mayor Walsh is not happy. Are you concerned that inspection wasn't done since 2004? Of course I am. And it's something that, you know, that costs every day seeing that something was coming up around special services and we are looking at revamping a lot of a lot of the procedures in there. Austin Mayor Marty Walsh talking about 296 Beacon Street, a place where welders may have been working on the fire escape and they sparked the inferno at 298 Beacon Street, a fire that killed Boston Fire Lieutenant Ed Walsh and firefighter Michael Kennedy. Records reveal that fire escape had not been inspected since 2004, even though state building code requires inspections every five years. So the fire escape should have been inspected in 2009 and then again this year, which raises a troubling question according to fire code expert Amy Croman, president of Strategic Company. So let's go back and what happened. Look at the history. There's nobody dying, there's nobody doing anything. Remember this? In 73, then you fast forward to 2014, right? And what we what do we have? So unless there's a mechanism in there and it's an automatic, people will not self-regulate. If you start letting everybody self-regulate when they do a sprinkler test, when they do an elevator test, when they do facade tests, what do we start getting? Where's the money spent? They'll, they'll spend fifty thousand dollars on a foyer with marble, but they won't spend five grand on a fire escape. Because the fifty thousand dollars in the foyer will get you better rent. What will the fire escape get you? Right? So this is why you don't have a trigger. So this occurs and this is what this is what we're facing, right? So now let's let's uh, see what we have to do here in order to move things along. So in some cases you're left up to your own your own uh, devices to basically get your building. So when I told you write a letter to all the buildings you own, whether you believe that person has one or not, you just make a general statement. Hey, I've been made aware that there's a requirement in the US that any building in the US, and if you have a building in the US, that we manage or don't manage, be aware that a fire escape uh, must be inspected every five years. So please provide us with the latest inspection that you did. And they call you up and say, what are you talking about? I said, exactly. We'll order one for you right away. But if all of a sudden, three years later, there's a fatality at, at one of these, guess what you have in your email? What you have in your documents that you sent to that client? That you did ask them for that. They didn't provide you with one. And you can't go there and verify whether they have a fire escape or not, but you send a general one. So that will get you some relief from the liability. All right, so this is what we did. We took a fire escape from a school that went from kindergarten to eighth grade. Kids use this fire escape every day, okay, to go from the second floor to the kindergarten yard. And these are all the kiddies that went down this fire escape. So who, called, who told me to fit, change this fire escape? Fire department? No. Building department. Insurance company. Principal, teachers, kids, or the janitor? The janitor said, dude, get this thing out of here. It's gonna <laughs> and as you know, this thing, anything older than 78 has lead in it. So you see any, you see any paint left on this? Well, that was deserved for the kids. They got, got to chew on a piece of chip and let a piece of chip and walk in and out of the, walk in and give them their hands on it. So what we did is I saved this. This is a pain. This is only a one story, but it was so rotten. And I saved it, I would have brought it here. Usually I bring it as a dark and punch. I put it here and I saved the very top to show you and I bring the very bottom to show you. But these are the pictures that show you what welding witch doctors do. So this is when welding witch doctors come in. They don't remove rust. They don't even repair it. They band-aid it. So you gotta be careful with the welding witch doctors. It's a band-aid. It's basically joining any good metal to some other good metal and just leave the rust alone wherever it may be. When you restore a fire escape, that's prepared in preparation for a low test or no low test. Because if you fully refurbish a fire escape, guess what gets eliminated? The low test. The NFPA says it best. The authority having jurisdiction shall accept by low test. Now that means it's existing structure, existing bolts, all in good condition, low test every five years. Every five. Those are $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 low tests. 
right, that they should be using for bolts and paint. So should you invest that money into paint and in bolts, it also says at the end of the day, there are other evidence of strength. So you change all the bolts on the tread, do I need to load test it? No. I change all the bolts on the structure, do I need to load test it? No. I, you know, the connection into the building, which is to be 12 inches, 18 inches wall, you're going to dig that open for 500 bucks a pop? Or you're going to put in a new Hilke epoxy <coughs> bolt next to it for 50 bucks? So by negating it and keeping it, what have I done? I've eliminated a load test. So if I have new epoxy bolts into your old building, do I need to load test it? No. And the NFPA is very clear. And then all the codes say that. Test or certify. So which one do you want to do? you want to test it because some of the original pieces are still there? Or you want to load test, I mean, you want to uh, uh, give us a certification because you got other evidence of strength. Now, how do you come up with this? You have to put all the four codes together because none of them say this until you overlap every single one of them. That's how long we've been working on that statement nationwide. Okay, so, just make sure I'm good for time. we good. So, this is all the stuff. That, this is what welding wood shockers do. They weld underneath, they fill it up, you know, leave the rust there, collect their three to five thousand dollars. Yeah, three to five thousand dollars. In and out. Permits? Fire permits? So. And what do they do? Paint it as quickly as possible. Then, then who do you call when it's all tacky and wet? You call the engineers. Say, hey, can you come look at this fire skin? Yeah, it's ready. You go up. We just finished painting. You go up. Then what happens? Those are the good guys who say, no, I'll go up, I'll dirty my shoes, I'm gonna go up. But then you got the stamp, right? The guys who rubber stamp anything, right? And you know what they do? They show up, roll down their window. So the first thing they ask for, check, they're coming through the window, they look up, and they say what? To the best of my information, knowledge, and belief, the fire escape is in conformity with the existing building codes and ready for its intended use today. What about tomorrow? I'll call me tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'll drive by again. That's called the golden parachute. Right? So this is what the structure they used to be four feet wide, by the way. And I shrunk down to two feet, so. So on one side we fixed it correctly, and on the other side we welding witch doctored it. But this is the structure before. This is the structure after. And we had only 16 days to get it in. It was right between the Christmas break. You guys just get this out of here. So we have to get it out, and then and then and it used to come into the yard. So the kids would run underneath it with all those sharp pieces of angle and stuff. That you know what I'm saying? It was, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. All right. This is a penitentiary. Looks good when you walk up to it, right? It's just a paint job. You get underneath it, look what you got. Now, here's the other thing you guys have to worry about. A lot of these things are hidden. When you stop walking up and down these fire escapes, they're going to just take a look. You don't know what you're doing. It's called a ping pong test. We carry a three pound hammer, and we go ping, ping, and as soon as it goes pong, what do we do? We give it a couple more pongs, and it'll still hold our, our step and keep going up. Or it'll do this. Three pound hammer. Okay. I think that's it. Here, so I'll and what I'll do now is I have my red, and I'll highlight it in red. Say, this is an emergency life threatening issue that the young needs to take care of. How about that one up there? Do you see that one? <laughs> So this is what we're facing when we're looking, oh, there's other forms, let's talk about all those forms of load testing there. It's called live load testing, which actually use live people. And, uh, and then you, it, it kind of tells you that it can hold or not hold. This happened in, um, this is not the actual picture, but something similar to this happened in uh, Harvard Square. And there's a big parade that, they ha that happens in Harvard Square of the, the pot, right? And one of the top railings is a nice heavy molding piece fell off, came down like a javelin, and below was, was about 20 people inside, <coughs> just sitting on the steps, just watching the break go by. And all these people came out of their dorm rooms and did this. Did it hit anybody? Nope. Did it ricochet and almost hit somebody? Yep. Did it hit anybody? No. But imagine the lawsuit there. 
This thing came down like a job and hit somebody right next to it and then it careened and it hit the car. They dodged the bullet. But this is all the time that people. So Firescape can kill anybody. That guy in the corner there is just a representation of one of our guys, his dad from fell seven stories to his death, doing the exact same thing. So it's not choosy. Firescape will chomp on anybody. So kid, kids, firemen, workers. Yeah, I'm an expert witness in a lot of fatalities. I was the expert witness in the Philadelphia one. I was an expert witness in the New York fatalities. I'm an expert witness now in a fatality, not uh, but an injury where a guy was a hawk. He's a hawk guy in San Diego. And he was using the fire escape to get down so he didn't have to go through the middle of with a hawk that chases seagulls away and, you know, and the fire escape gave away. Broke both his heels, to his heels. You remember the days when people used to small, uh, uh, sleep outside? Uh, paramedics use fire escapes every now and then, you know, porters, you know, they get in, they can't get in, so where, guess what the hell they get the people out? Through the, through the windows. Um, as you can see, non smoking buildings, so where are the kids going to smoke down? Right? A lot of wedding shots, this would be great. Yeah, we lost the entire wedding party at a fire escape for talent. <laughs> this is a new show that, you know, you, I mean, there's plenty of reality shows. We're going to call this fire escaping. Uh, and what this is, it's, a, it's basically like, like a telenovela. Basically, everyone's cheating on everybody. And guess what they use? <laughs> fire escape. Right? So but what happens is there's always some drama, and that is somebody dies and gets crippled, and then he doesn't want her anymore. She doesn't want him anymore because he's missing a leg. Or, so this is our, this is where we're at. We have plenty of places to shoot. All right, let's keep moving. Street. 
but it's also on the corner of 229 or um, I think it's 22nd Street or something. I got a call to inspect the building. Guess what building they brought you? And I inspected the whole fire escape again, and then somebody had to put it back. Pass or fail?
in the uh, New Jersey, the state of New Jersey, but also anywhere in the country you bring me in, I can teach a class of six hours or more. Okay? So what do we have here? Let's uh, pull, out the, pull out the answers first. So if you make a quick book, what is it? Tells you, you know, the man's version, talks about the lead paint. Anybody know about the renovator license? Can't weld on a fire escape anyway because it's a thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollar fine because it has lead paint. <coughs> Guess what? The EPA finally kicked in. Does anybody obey those laws? No. <coughs> confidence tests. These are some of the confidence tests. These are some of the early confidence tests I have. What you have in your hands is the latest, greatest version of the confidence test. And the first one I ever created was out in Seattle because four people fell. What is that? Typical examination. Fire escapes must have an examination. You must submit pictures to the city officials so they don't have to go down there. And they can assess what's going on. These are typical documents that are in some of your codes already. And this is a construction control document that you can easily modify, but we have even better. This is a repair and guidelines. How do you fix a bolt on a tread on a rail? It's all up here. You're not going to be masters of this. Just know that it exists. So that if somebody says, I don't know what to do, you say, well, that already exists. It's all on the website. This is the current certificate for the city of Boston. And it says right on here, nice and plain. The best of my information knowledge of the week. The fire safety will inform you of the vast building code. And who can sign on on these? Ready? This is the best part. Who can sign on this document in the city of Boston? Structural engineer, registered architects, and fire escape installers. So if I can do my work and sign off on my own work, what happens in the city of Boston? Is that the fox in the hen house selling chicken out the back end? Oh, right up here. Right? Been doing it for 15 years. Okay, let's keep going. This is how every fire escape has ever been built in the U.S. No changes. They built it 100 years ago. No changes in how it's attached. All fire escapes going over roofs must be complete with a catwalk and to grade. By the way, no ladders anymore. Every fire escape must be completely graded with a full set of stairs. Unless you have an existing ladder, then you can maintain it indefinitely until the fire escape, the building comes down. If you need to build a new fire escape, you can build a new fire escape. Even though the law says no new fire escape, no new fire escape for new buildings like this. But any existing box, institution, outhouse, barn, mansion, you can add fire escapes to it to meet the means of egress after you've exhausted all means of putting the egress inside so you can build fire escapes 